This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Eddie Ernst joined the bubble. Fight camp week two. How are we doing? Good, mate. Welcome to the bubble. You got the gig this week? Yeah. Very lucky, mate. You wait till you get up to the uh, to the house. It's uh, it's different because obviously we come out of a show normally, as you know, and there's what 30, 40 media to interview. And when we finish here, I've just got to do you and then I can bugger off home. So looking forward to it. Uh, media day today. Again, another week where everybody passed their COVID-19 test. Thank God for that, me included. And um, yeah, all, all ready to go. Nice little, little spice building between uh, Harper and Jonas Camps. Joe, mainly. I've not seen Joe like this since probably Quig Frampton. Like he was messaging me last night saying, you are, believe me when I tell you, Tasha's going to win this, she's going to knock her out. I'm like, all right, Joe. Like, Good luck to everybody. No, no, you'll see, mate. He's fired up. So I think we should get some good good stuff from uh, Mr. Gallagher today. People suggesting what, she might be um, having some issues with her weight, Eddie? I don't think so. I think, you know, whenever someone arrives, like, look, it's definitely, we like to get everybody here on Monday when there's a Friday fight, okay? Tuesday if it's a Saturday fight. And that's the, say, orders. You know, we, we've everybody's got a set time to test. You know, they've got a set time for their media stuff yesterday that you saw. And Joe just doesn't normally like to conform to the rules. So he wants to come down the next day. And um, I don't, I doubt it's got a reflection of her weight, to be honest with you. I think it's just Joe being Joe. And that's what he does. So um, she t I don't think it would have been Tasha, you know. I mean, the only disappointing thing is they miss out on all their media stuff. I know we got the press conference today, but yesterday was a great day. You know, loads of media, photo shoots here. So. But listen, it is what it is. She looks fantastic, Natasha. I think she's had a great camp. You know, I think that mentally she's putting everything into this fight Perfect. like it's the last roll of the dice. And that makes her very, very dangerous. But in Terry, you've got someone that is extremely confident right now, young, in her prime, and firing on all cylinders. We'll talk about the card in uh, more depth, but I'm going to have to uh, just mention Frank's statement yeah. last night. So it was addressed to yourselves and mm -hmm. Sky Sports. Mm -hmm. He said he's going to reach out to Adam Smith today as well. Essentially saying he wants to match his best fighters against yours. Folks? Mm. Uh, I, someone sort of sent it to me last night. It was quite bizarre. I mean, interesting, bizarre. You'd think that with a, an idea like that, you'd actually just drop me a line or send me an email rather than put a press release out. But that yeah, got everyone's attention. And um, I think it's a difficult one because people don't really know. I, I, Chris Lloyd put a great tweet out this morning about the whole situation. Um, if you know the setup and the situation in, in the sport, like last week, for example, the board received, I think, more than, certainly three, more than three emails of complaint from Queensbury, grassing on stuff that they thought Matram had been doing wrong and trying to sabotage our show. And this isn't an, an unusual thing. And I think in my last interview, or the launch of the interview at Fight Camp, I mentioned that Chris Jenkins and his team want, want, were happy with the offer. I got a legal letter the next day. I've had dozens of legal letters over the years. No one's ever reached out to me to talk. Complaints to the board, you know, uh, setting up troll Twitter accounts, people in there are like, it's just, so you have to understand, it ain't really a pleasant working relationship. So part of me goes, do you know what? I understand, you know, they came back into boxing with, after the pandemic, it's flopped on its arse, we've come back, fight camp, wallop, they're thinking, fuck, what are we going to do now? Let's get this out of there. So I understand, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't look at it, but because I think it's great for boxing. I think, you look at the card, I mean, I looked at the poster, half of it's unrealistic. We know that Dubois is fighting Joyce, White's fighting Povetkin, he's mandatory to Tyson Fury. We know that, um, what was another fight I saw in there? Uh, I don't know, Jenkins against Ben, yeah, great, ordered. Boatsy well, Yard, I love. Okay. Um, Williams Andrade. Williams Andrade is already ordered as well. Yeah, so there, there is substance there. But it's like, you know, I'm not saying that we shouldn't look at it. Of course we should. But it's hard for me to take anything seriously when it's put out in a press release and all I ever get from them is legal letters and them, even last week, grassing to the board about stuff that don't even exist to try and sabotage my show. So see you later. We'll do our own thing. But I also understand the response of the fans, which is, yeah, this is great. So happy to look at it. Happy to look at it. They're saying they're willing to drop their guard, forget the past. But Omar, they've got no choice. 
But it doesn't mean that I'm not going to look at it and I'm going to let my ego go, no, see you later, you're finished anyway. I'm happy to look at it because some of them are great fights. And I do think the idea of making those fights is good for boxing. So I won't let my ego get in the way. I would have liked a phone call or an email to say, this is what we're thinking. So you don't know whether it's a publicity stunt or what it is. And there are big concerns. Like, you know, and again, fans don't... It's hard for me to do an interview like this and tell you the, the gospel truth because fans don't really want to hear the politics. You know, people talk about splits, people talk about money, people talk, and that we're really the only sport, aren't we, where fans talk about those things, mm. yeah? But these interviews are always stripped back and raw, and we're different, we're just at different stages of our, of our business life, the two businesses, you know, I mean, but for the fans, I can't be that seen to say, no, no, you did this, you did this, so swing on it. I'm saying, no problem, we can talk about it. And there are a number of fights on there that we should look to make. In fact, actually, a lot of that card that they put out, I think we will make, and I think we'll make it on the Fury AJ card, to be honest with you. I mean, we will make that fight, and the undercard will be, no doubt, ESPN, Top Rank, Queensbury, Matchroom, and all that kind of stuff. So I do think we'll get there, but it just sort of made me laugh with everything that's gone on in the last couple of weeks, with the comebacks, that, you know, this was... So it's obviously something they've been planning up during lockdown. So my response is, despite the past, despite everything you try and do, if I'm feeling charitable, I'm willing to help you out. Have you had any direct contact from anyone at Queensbury? No, I mean, well, we, the only correspondence we've had recently is Andy Aylin writing to the board nonstop to complain that David Diamante actually came in 13 days before instead of 14 days before, which was incorrect. And again, like no one likes a grass. Do you know what I mean? But we deal with it. We have to deal with it every week. It's non-stop. So the only correspondence, what they did I think yesterday or the day before was they sent a couple of offers to sort of get this whole, I think okay. like in anticipation, now I can see why, for uh, Jenkins to fight Ben, which we'd, we'd made an offer that Jenkins was over the moon with and they didn't want to do the fight on Sky. Honestly, if our fighters you know, if, if our fighters receive an offer that I think is a great offer and they're happy to box on BT, right, and they like the offer and their management like the offer, no problems. Another one, Williams Andre. You know, we've reached out to, to MTK and to uh, Queensbury to say, make us an offer. We'll do that fight on BT, no problem at all, nothing. So I don't want to be seen to be the party pooper because I know that on paper fans look at it and go, yeah. So I'm saying, yeah, great, let's look at it. But it's hard to take him seriously. Who do you normally talk to? Who does Frank Smith do that in terms of like Francis or never? Vanessa? No one. No one. I mean, so when you were doing Conor Ben, Chris Jenkins? No, I'll email Andy Alien. I mean, Andy Alien. Look, Andy Alien used to work for Matrim thirty years ago or whatever it was. I don't know how long. 20, 20 years ago, twenty five years ago. Um, so I've no problem speaking to him. But it's like you have a conversation. Next thing, you get a legal letter. Next thing, there's a complaint to the board. Now, it's it's just never ending. So again, it's hard for me to explain to fight fans the feeling of, I should really go, but I'm willing to go for boxing. 100% we'll look at it. All I'm focused on right now is our business and our fires and getting through this pandemic. Because I don't know what businesses will get through this pandemic. Maybe that's a roll of the dice from them and say, this is the only way we'll get through the pandemic. Not ask them. So again, I'm not, you know, uh, yeah, but they're offering some good fights as well for your fighters. So yeah, but but a lot of those fights are already ordered. Some are completely unrealistic at the moment, right? I mean, you can go through the fight. I, but I agree, the fights are great. But look, Dillian White, if he beats Povetkin, he's got a date of end of February for Task Three. You can't expect him. And by the way, Joe Joyce is contracted to fight um, Daniel Dubois in October. If that happens, probably end up getting pushed to December, whatever. So and Chisora's fighting Usyk. So those two fights right now aren't on the table. Boatsy Yard, love that fight. Yeah. Love that fight. Um, what was another fight? Connor Ben against Chris Jenkins, already ordered. Williams against Andrade, already ordered. Um, uh, what was the other one? Oh, on, really yeah. There was another one I remember. Uh, right. Zelfa Barrett against... Archie Sharp, brilliant fight. Yeah, don't mind that one. Don't mind that fight. Nathan Gorman, Dave Allen. Yeah, I mean, Dave isn't with us, but he's with MTK. But again, I like that's a good fight as well. Charlie Edwards, Kalia Fai. 
Yeah, I mean, that's a fight that's had some history as well. Um, I'm in talks for Cal Yafai to have a world title fight, but wouldn't, you know. Um, I think they're both contemplating moving up one, two, three weights. So that's a good fight. So as at well. least you're saying there's a couple of fights. Mate, there. 100%. There are fights they put out that I think we should look to make. That is, but, you know, any anyone with a brain would understand my concerns and also understand what's happened over there. I can't, you know. But I've always said I'll put ego aside to make good fights. The one that we've got to get done first is AJ against Fury. And that, I think, will be the catalyst to open those doors. But again, all of that is done now with Bob Aaron. So, yeah, it's just a bit weird that it came out like that and not like, Eddie, it's Frank, listen, I've got this idea. What do you think? That would have been a lot more, or would appear to be a lot more genuine. You know, you're talking about all this bad blood and legal letters, etc. Mm -hmm. If you were to make a couple of fights, you not think that'd just be squashed? Yeah, but we don't, again, <laughs> this sounds really arrogant. We don't need this, Umar. Do you know what I mean? We're flying, flying. Um, but it doesn't mean we won't do it because if it's good business and it's good for boxing, we will do it. But I'm not here. I, I, you know, I'm not out there every day going, I, hope, I wish I could squash the bad blood. The bad blood don't really exist. It's very frustrating when you're trying to do a job. Like last, last week, they had a show that on a Friday, on Thursday, they're writing three-page emails to the board, complaining about us. I'm thinking, what are you doing? And it reflects in the 3,000 viewing figures. The average viewing figure number of their show was 3,000. That's another concern for our fighters, you know? Go up to the fighters now and ask them if they're happy to box, or would they rather box? Do you know what I mean? So, but I don't want to be seen to just be going, no, we don't get on with them, they're ourselves apart. So my answer is, if they want to have a call, they've got my number, no problem. We'll talk about it. There's a lot of good fights to be made, and I've no problem discussing it. Have you spoke to Adam Smith about it? Or not? Um, I think yeah. He messaged me last night. I mean, general feeling is that there's not really look BT and Sky. That there's a good um, rivalry there. Do you know what I mean? And um, they don't. Again, they don't look at BT and think, oh, you know, because it's so much bigger. And you see that it's a reflection of numbers. That's not a dig. That's just the market. Um, but I think the broadcaster would look at it and go, yeah, some of those fights sound great. How do we do it? The paper, you know, it's, it, I think it, the only way it really works is a pay-per-view card, mm. to be honest with you. Otherwise, I'm quite happy to do backwards and forwards. Do you know what I mean? You know, if, if, if we've got a fighter to fight on BT, no problem. If they want to put a fighter on Sky, no problem. But it's not like, it's, it's painful because it's like, oh, well, you do one and and we'll do one. It's like, no, let's just do individual case by case. That's why the Chris Jenkins thing was so disappointing. Because it was like, great offer. The kid is desperate for this fight. He's over the moon with the money. Just let him fight. No, no, not letting him fight. And it's like, that's not really, that doesn't really show me the progression of a relationship. Do you know what I'm saying? So, we shall see. Poster looks nice. Obviously, been planning that throughout lockdown. Action speaks louder than words. No problem discussing any of those fights on the thing other than Dubois White and Joyce against Jazora. Because right now, those two are irrelevant. I think all of the others, I think, are in play. Okay. And I think the, the biggest, obviously you've got AJ Fury, but the biggest of those, Boatsy and Young. That's a big, big fight. Big fight. And that's a fight that I think we should start planning now for 2021. I really do. It would be nice to see you and Frank together, eh? I'd like, day. listen, <laughs> I've never met, I've never met the guy. Well, you walked past him once. Yeah, walked past him once on the street, never met the guy. Um, so, no problem. Shaking his, I've heard, I've heard he's good company over a bite to eat, you know what I mean? We'll probably end up liking each other, but some people do business differently. It's not, it's nothing personal, but you, we, you know, for everything, again, if you're on Twitter, look at Chris Lloyd's tweet. What did he say? I'll get it out. It just summed it up personally. And it was a little bit, it wasn't... Do you understand as well that I can't come out and start attacking because I just look like, oh, you just don't want, you know, why don't you do this show? It's great. So Chris Lloyd says, oh, fuck. Hold on. Get Chris Lloyd in trouble now. Shout out to Chris Lloyd. But you see, a lot of this was going on last week, right? all these, these complaints. So everybody in the bubble knew about it because I was talking about it and I was aware of the complaints. So Chris Lloyd says, 
I think Warren posted, for anyone saying Queensbury and Matram can't happen, why not? And Chris Lloyd said, because while Matram focus on their events, all your team ever do behind the scenes is try and sabotage them with legal letters and fake Twitter accounts. As a result, you're miles off the place and having to ask the very same people for a collaborative effort. Good luck with that. Now that's probably a little bit harsh. For, for, I agree with it one million percent. But in terms of my PR, you know, face, I have to roll that into, I'm willing to look at it, and I am. But that's what I'm saying. Last week, yeah, you wanted to try and ruin us and finish us and sabotage our show. This week, you want to join forces. And in the middle of that was fight camp. Say no more. Okay, you mentioned viewing figures. What mm. did you make of Coppinger's tweets about Frank shows and your shows? Um, I got the figures myself. So he just, he's a bit of a uh, slippery, slippery Coppinger. He gets the figures from the broadcasters. I've got the same figures. Um, you get the immediate figures the next day. Um, and then you get the Nielsen numbers and other figures come in shortly after. Generally, they're between 5% of the numbers that come in the next day. So I was, I mean, what did we do? We did uh, just about 200 average and think about, uh, I think it was actually going to be just under 90,000 in the uh, average. No, sorry, just under 90,000 average, 200,000 peak. It wasn't Kel Brook against... Liam Smith, it wasn't Amir Khan, it wasn't Callum Smith, it wasn't Josh Warrington, it wasn't Billy Joe Saunders or, or one of our other stable that would have that would have racked up five, six, seven hundred. So Sky were happy with the start, more happy about what they saw in terms of the whole experience of Fight Camp. And um, yeah, I mean Coppinger, you know, he's he's on it like as soon as I woke up in the morning, you know, I'm chasing your viewing figures, you got any numbers for me? And then he comes back, is this true? And I'm like, yeah, it is actually. So I would have liked to give him a little bit of a snide number, but he's, he's good cop in Jade. He rarely gets things wrong, to be fair to him. What's going on with uh, Kuzmin and Macaulay? That's obviously off. Why is yeah, Ku that? unfortunately, Kuzmin's father uh, has cancer and um, he's not well at all. So he's going to be staying in Russia and we're having a replacement that we're looking to announce this week. So um, good fight for, for Bacoli and um, also looking at the prospect of getting Dave Allen on the card as well. Um, again, something we've got to box off in the next 24, 48 hours because Dave wants to know. Short notice, isn't it? It is, but he's in camp. I mean, I don't know if you've seen his pictures. He's in great shape. Jamie Moore's here, they've got to talk. Fascinating that on that week, or no, next week, Chisora and Allen will be sparring Povetkin here in the bubble. So, you know, We'll see. We need to add, um, obviously we've got um, Babich, Dillian White's heavyweight, we've got Clay Congo, we've got Bacoli, we've got Taylor against Bassoon, we've got White against Povetkin, but we do need one other fighter. So that could be Dave Allen. So we're ruling out Fabio Wardley on that card, yeah? Probably, okay. probably. It was a, we was a bit pumped after his win, where I just said, just jump on the card, three weeks to go. What's the situation going to be with crowd noise for the rest of Fight Camp? Um, I believe this Saturday we're going to try it without. Adam, is that right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's work in progress. It's work in progress. Um, one of the problems I think we had last week was the corner men are muzzled. You know, the they, have a, the boy, they have this big sort of protective mask, then they have the visors, and you couldn't hear them as clearly as we'd like to. So we've improved the mics. We've also improved the mics around the ring to hear the punches better. And I believe we'll be having no background noise. When we say crowd noise, like I, quite, I didn't mind what they did last week because it wasn't really crowd noise, it was more of a fuzz. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't like fake cheers and all that kind of stuff. So they're going to try everything during these next, well, this week and next week. And then for the pay-per-view, they'll have it 100%. What have the board said about the visors for the training? Because they're all clean anyway. I so. know. I Like, someone made a comment yesterday. They were out there. I think you were playing cricket out there yesterday. So everyone's playing cricket with no masks. But when we get up there, you've got to wear a mask. Do you know what I mean? But the reason that there's no masks while you're playing cricket is because you've all been tested and you're in an isolated environment. But the board have made their rules for the August shows and they won't change it. So we've got to get through this period. You know, it's not a pop at the board. I think they've done a brilliant job during a very tough period. I don't agree with that, but better safe than sorry, isn't it? So um, it is what it is. And I think as we progress into September, we'll start to see those, those precautions lifted. Now, you and Michael Hunter split. It hasn't been mentioned on the channel yet. 
just the reason why that happened, Eddie? Just his contract was up, and um, we're at a stage now, Michael's a, a really good fighter, a uh, really good bloke, right? I just couldn't get him delivering any numbers. And we're at this stage now where, unfortunately, those who don't deliver numbers, I'm struggling because the broadcasters will be more brutal than ever to say, right, if we're paying for it, we want to make sure that we're hitting numbers. And we've got that many fighters that we can't satisfy all of them. And there's other, even world champions, that I'm probably going to have to say, I can't make you a new offer. So with Michael Hunter, I just couldn't make him a new offer. I would have loved to have kept him. I think he's a really good fighter. I believe he can win a world heavyweight title. But I just I can't have everybody at that price with, you know, in coming out of this pandemic because the shows aren't there, you know? So, yeah, that, that was a tough one. And there are other fighters whose contracts are up as well who we may not uh, renew or they might want to leave. You know what I mean? They're always free. You, when your contract's up, you've got the right to go or, you, or we make you an offer or we don't make you an offer and you go. So, interesting times. The whole business at the moment is, is turning on its head. So, it's exciting. When does uh, Campbell Garcia go to first pitch? Next week, I believe. We, we're getting to a decent stage. I think Golden Boy haven't... Uh, we've made them an offer. They haven't yet made us an offer, which I hope they'll do as well because they've got some shows in. Nova. Our shows are pretty much planned out now in America for end of September, October, November and December. I know, well, in terms of planned out, I know who's on those cards. So I haven't really got space for Garcia, Campbell, but I will make space because it's a great fight. But it would actually be a little bit easier if Golden Boy could use it on one of their shows where they might not have allocated yet. So I'm up for doing a co-pro with them or whatever it is to get that fight over the line. I think it's a brilliant fight and I think the division's on fire right now. Risky fight. I mean, I spoke to Devin Haney yesterday. He wants to fight Ryan Garcia. He don't really want Campbell to fight Ryan Garcia because he thinks he might beat him. But it is a 50-50 fight and a great one. So you think you'll reach a deal, yeah? I do, actually, yeah. Okay. yeah. I think it's important that we do because, you know, you're seeing Lomachenko against Tiafimo Lopez kind of slide away. Dollars. Yeah, I mean, you shake your head, 1.2 million dollars. Yeah, I know, but like... It ain't easy at the moment, Umar. You know, you've got no gate. He's a right? world champion. It is. And I guess he looks at it and thinks, well, Luke Campbell got more than that. And he was a mandatory challenger. Exactly. So how can I get less than Luke Campbell? <laughs> and this is the undisputed fight. And I'm world champion coming in. So I agree with TFMO Lopez. But I also feel for, not feel for top rank, because they're all right. But, you know, like, I know where we're at. So it's difficult to make those big fights right now, because that's a fight. Well, you might do a million on the gate. So, you know, I hope they get it made because it's a great fight. Andre Ward had a pop at you. Yeah, I know. I mean, Andre Ward added, had a pop at me for giving my opinion. I mean, he's not opinionated, is he? Andre Ward. Um, it's the clickbait, Umar. And you are one of the worst with the clickbait. Because you know what boxing's, boxing scene did? My exact words, the quote, if the commissioner steps in and stops the fight during the fight, it would be a disaster. Boxing scene's article, Hearn says Tyson v. Jones could be a disaster. So Andre Walker, I just went back to him and said, mate, read the article. Uh, there's no way he read that article. No way. Do you know what I don't understand about American people? Keep your nose out of our business. You stay over there on in your side of the pond. No, fuck off. What about when you wanted to come over and fight in England? You know what I mean? Tell me that I can't come to America and stick my nose in and do business. It's not, that's not a free world, is it? So, my opinion is, if all I said was about Tyson against Jones is, I kind of wish that it wasn't an exhibition. I know they just went, we're going to go hammer and tong. Because then at least you know what you're getting. At the moment, we don't really know what we're getting, do we? An exhibition. What, one round, the ref jumps in and goes, actually, guys, it's a bit rough. Just box and move. What, interviews during the round? I don't know. You might end up watching it going, what the fuck is this? So what I said was, I'd rather they just went at it. But then someone else had a pop at me because I said, I don't think it would be ethical for two guys at that age, having suffered the defeats they have, especially Roy Jones recently, I don't think it would be ethical to let them go at it hammer and top. And some bloke said to me, 
think it's uh, Mark Ortega, journalist. Oh, ethical, you did KSI against Logan Paul. I said, yeah, but they're two blokes that can't really fight that were never going to hurt each other. This is something where two guys have been knocked out badly. They're 50 plus and it is dangerous. Anyway, whatever. What do you think about Joshua's comments saying Fury's never been in the deep end before? Um, I think that the only, I mean, what he means by that really is I think he's never been out on his feet and had to come through or try and battle away. The only time was against Deontay Wilder, yeah. So, but I do think that Fury, a lot of Fury's fights, and, and listen, good luck to him, and it's, it's well deserved from him, haven't been that taxing. You know, when he fought Vladimir Klitschko, if you look at the hammer that AJ took in that fight, and by the way, I'd rather he didn't take the hammer, but we saw that he had to come through that in a long distance fight. But surely so, going to Germany, all the tricks they were trying to play, that is the deep yeah, end. Yeah, but in the fight, he didn't have to come through the deep end. And only because he was too good. So it's not a dig at him, do you know what I mean? But I think what Josh wants to try and do is take him to that place, quite honestly. He's pumped with that, isn't he? Well, mate, I spoke, I had him on last night, 45 minutes on the phone, pumped for that fight. Pumped for that fight. I'm so confident in that fight, honestly. Really? I know that, I know that he's the outsider, but yeah. Listen, I've got 50 grand with Billy Joe Saunders. I've got 50 grand with Darren Till. I'll probably have another million on the way. What's going on with Gennady Golovkin, by the way? I'm trying to set a date for the Zerometa fight. So, most people, most of these big names are only going to box once this year. Right? AJ the same. Fury the same. Canelo the same. Gennady Golovkin the same. So, you've just got to nail the date that works. At the moment, I think if quite a few people are kind of giving themselves some time to see will the crowds come back because it'll make a big difference financially. That's why we're going December with AJ. He could go October, November, but we want to give ourselves a chance to get people in the O2. Do you see Kel Brook calling out Terence Crawford? Yep, yep, and Thurman and all those guys. Mm. Good fights, good fights. Don't see how they can happen at the moment. Look at the, look at the, the Tiafimo incident, you know? How are you going to give Terence Crawford five, six, seven million and Kel Brook two, three million? Impossible. Have you got plans for Kel Brook then? Um, I mean, again, till the crowds open up, very difficult. Again, with someone like Kel Brook. But you know, we look at all those fighters, you know, the bigger name fighters that we represent, Callum Smith in the UK, Callum Smith, Billy Joe Saunders, Kel Brook, uh, Josh Warrington, Luke Campbell, um, probably missed some out as well. You know, Joshua Boatze, but he's fighting. You know, but the, you know, the guys who are world championship level, how do you get them out and pay them the money they want in this situation, that's that's the latest hurdle to overcome. So you know, when we talk about the match from Queensbury stuff, yeah, open for that. But my immediate focus is getting through this period. It's going to be very tough for all of us. Mm. Okay, just last one. Run me through uh, the card on Friday night. Well, we're back again. I mean, last Saturday was off the charts, off the charts. I mean, I thought it was a good idea when we started. Fuck me. I felt like God walking out of that office on Saturday night. It was unbelievable. And this week, we got more fireworks. We got more pyrotechnics. And I think we've got a card that will, I think on paper, you'd probably say it wasn't as strong as last Saturday, but it's got a bigger fight in Harper Jonas, first ever all British women's world champ. up some surprises. When you look at Akib Fiaz against Kane Baker, Kane Baker's all over this. And I love the fact, like Nathan Bennett, who tried so hard against Dalton Smith, opportunity of a lifetime. That's gonna kick us off at seven o'clock. Then we go into the Commonwealth Cruiserweight Championship, Chris Billum Smith against Nathan Thorley, Thorley with Gary Lockett, I think 17, 18 and 0, great amateur. Big step up for him, but they believe they're ready. I think Billum Smith looks great. I think he could be a real gem coming out of uh, 2021. Then, again, you, sometimes you don't see the background of these fights. Hopi Price is fighting a guy called Johnny Phillips. Johnny Phillips, I think he's seven and six, but Johnny Phillips has boxed as heavy as light welter, maybe even welter. This fight is made at nine stone two, but really Hopi wanted it probably more towards eight, 10, eight, 11. This time last week, even Saturday night, we hadn't had an opponent for Hopi Price. And the problem with my no easy fights is, no easy fights. I don't want to give Hopi Price a journeyman that everyone starts moaning about. So I'll give him a guy that's boxed at 140 pounds. He knocked out Nathaniel Wilson at 140 pounds. Last November, he went six really good rounds with Stephen Smith, former world title challenger, at, I think it was nine stone seven. So Dave Caldwell ain't a big fan of this fight. And it's gonna be a very big test for Hopi Price. Adam Harper, if he does what he's been blabbing on about for the last year or so and texting me about this morning, should give Anthony Fowler a really good fight. 
He's got a great chin. Only defeat comes to Michael Zarafa in America, uh, in Australia, in a good fight. We saw Zarafa beat um, yeah. Jeff Horn, had a good fight with Kel Brook as well. So Harper's game and up for this as well. So I'm looking forward to see the improvements that Fowler's made as he heads between. You, know, you talk about, oh, that was another fight. Fowler Metcalf was uh, Queensbury. Yeah, 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 personally. But also like Fowler Fitzgerald. But I do also. I think Fowler Metcalf is a great fight as well. Um, so big fight for Fowler and then the main event I'm so excited about I mean I'm absolutely loving women's uh, world championship boxing this starts three weeks for us of three massive women's world championship fights Friday night Harper against Jonas next week the undisputed uh, Cecilia Brackhouse against Jessica McCaskill and the week after that the undisputed Katie Taylor against Delphine Persoon too so women's boxing flying flying at the moment and I love Harper Jonas because Jonas everything on the line Last chance, chance to win a WBC world title. Joe Gallagher, all the team up there, convinced she does it. Terry Harper, for me, might be the next big thing in women's boxing, but might just be all hype. Didn't look like that against Wallstrom, but let's see. Another big night, Friday, Friday night. Sky Sports action, Sky Sports mix, Sky Sports main event across all the channels. Don't miss it. Can you give Dom Ingle a big shout out for Fast Car Ready? Mate. I, I don't like some of the lyrics, but yeah, shout out to Dom Ingle. Last week, I was singing it around here in the bubble, and it stuck. So, yeah, all good fun. That's what I do, thank you. Cheers, mate.